Kurtigia, thank you so much for, for joining us on the Monday, 3rd of October, 2022 edition of the Storytelling by and for Adult series. Uh, please introduce yourself fully, tell us about your work, and please tell us a story. Thank you, Eric. Um, yes, thank you once again, Eric, for uh, arranging this, I think, for how many years? I don't know now. First in person and now online. Um, thank you so much for doing this for us, for all storytellers now across the world. Uh, I'm Pratigya Haran. I have been telling stories for over eight years now, um, from toddlers to older people across all ages, schools, uh, corporates, uh, libraries mostly. Uh, anywhere and everywhere people invite, they want to hear a story, I have a story. So that's me. Um, today's story is... is um, when, when Eric asked me, what story are you going to say? Uh, I hadn't decided. And he pushed me like, I need a story now. I need a story now. So a few days ago, I told him, okay, I'll, I'll share this particular story. And, uh, and then I realized, you know what? October 1st is International Day for Older Person. So this story is very, very apt in that way. So long, long ago, in the land of mountainous Japan, there lived a lord, a lord who would pass commands or order commands which were up to his whims and fancies and did not always make sense. One such command was all the people who have turned very old and are not able to work any longer, not able to till the fields or ply the trade, have now become useless. And so they should be taken off to the mountain far away and abandoned, left there to die. Some people actually thought this was a good idea. Of course, I'm so poor. I, I, I'm struggling to make ends meet. I need to feed my children. I don't have enough money, enough resources to support the older people in my life. Besides, they've lived their life, haven't they? It's probably time for them to move on. This is actually a good decision. And of course, there were others who thought, how ridiculous. How, how can we just throw away our elders? They are family. We can't just throw away our family. That, that just doesn't make sense. But irrespective of what an individual thought, that was the law of the land and each one of them was forced to follow it. One such person was a young farmer. His father had turned very old. He had grown very old. Physically, he was not able to do absolutely anything. And so... This young farmer was forced to take his father on his back and set off on that journey, that wretched journey towards the mountain to abandon his father. As he walked in a very, very heavy heart, thinking how helpless he is, how he can do absolutely nothing and he's forced to do this terrible, terrible thing to his own father. Tap, tap, tap. He heard this sound at regular intervals. He looked over his back and he noticed that his father was breaking the twigs, the ends of the branches and making a trail on the way. Oh, he felt even worse now. Father, are you marking a trail to find your way back home? He knew this just wouldn't be possible. But what his father told him broke his heart even more. Oh, no, 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 my son. This is not for me. This is for you. I want to make sure that you don't lose your way. I have lived my life. It's your turn now. Oh, when the young lad heard this, he just broke down wailing. He did not know what to do. He set his father down and he cried and he wept. And then he knew what he wanted to do. He took his father back on his back. He turned around and set back towards his village. What, what are you doing? What is wrong with you? If, if you get caught, if I get caught, we'll both be killed. This is not the right thing to do, my son. Just leave me here. Just leave me at the mountain. I've had enough of my life. But the son just would not hear a word of his father. He just walked on. When he reached the village, he and his father hid themselves behind some bushes. They waited for it to get dark. 
They waited for the village to go silent. They waited for every single person to fall asleep. And only then, the two of them tiptoed back into the house. Every night, the father would be pulled out from his hiding and the son would feed him and take care of him. And during the day, very carefully, he would hit back, send him back in a room and lock him up so that nobody would know that an old person was there. This arrangement worked pretty well for a few months. The daytime, the father was hid somewhere in the house and the nighttime, the son would take him out, bring him out, feed him and care for his father. As I told you, the Lord was someone who would have orders and commands as for his whims and fancies. So one day he decided he wanted to try some riddles, some ridiculous challenges and tasks which just did not make sense and were very, very difficult. And so he gathered all the farmers of his region and he told them, tomorrow I want each one of you to bring a woven rope of ashes. A woven rope of ashes? That, but, but that is impossible. H how can you weave ashes? It's just going to be gone. Woof. How is it possible? Nobody could really get an idea as to what can they do or how, how are they going to get around it? But then they knew if they could not do it, there could be a terrible punishment and they had no idea what the punishment could be. Very worried, each one of them went back to their house. The young son pulled his father out. He fed him. And as he sat there quietly, his father obviously noticed that something was amiss with his son. What is the matter? Why are you so quiet today? You don't even seem to be eating. Tell me, open up my son. Father, father, you know the Lord. He has just passed some ridiculous law now. I don't know what he wants. He wants each one of us to bring a robe of woven ashes. How in the world is that possible? I just don't know what to do. There's a new challenge, a new trouble every single day. The father thought about it for a while and then a smile broke on his lips. I know what you can do. Take a rope and weave it very tightly. Place it on a pan and burn it. And then carry those ashes to the Lord. Ah, this would work. Such a brilliant idea, such a simple idea. I'll do it right away. And that's exactly what he did. And he carried that pan, a pan with a rope of woven ashes towards the Lord. Hmm, that is rather a good thing, a clever thing you've done. I'm impressed. And now for the second task. Second task, oh no, what is it going to be this time? I want each one of you to pick up a conch shell and thread it. Thread a conch shell? Oh, yet another impossible task and yet another useless task. Why does this Lord put us through all of this every single time? Deep in thought, worried, not knowing what to do, each one of them went back to their houses. And yes, this young lad too. He took, took, took his father out, he fed him, and once again his father noticed, instead of being happy that the previous day's uh, task has been done very well. He found his son still worried. What is the matter today? He asked. Oh, father, yet another useless, tough task. How can anybody thread a conch shell? The father knew exactly what needs to be done. Get me a conch shell, he said. The son rushed inside and picked one. Get me a thread. He got him a thread. The father picked one grain of rice from the food and stuck it to that thread. He dropped that inside the conch shell. He looked around, picked an ant and dropped it inside the conch shell. Then he aimed the light, the conch shell towards the light. And yes, magically, the ant picked up that rope, rather the rice, and he carried that rope through and through, through, towards the light. And that's how the conch shell was threaded.
oh, this is brilliant, father. You seem to have a simple solution to every problem. I will take this to him right away. And yes, he did. Of course, the Lord was quite happy. But yes, he had yet another, yet another task. Look here, he told all the farmers. There are lots and lots of logs of wood. I want each one of you to pick one. And come back tomorrow and tell me which end of the log belongs to the upper part of the tree and which end belongs to the lower part. Everybody scratched their heads, not knowing what to do. But this young farmer knew exactly where to go. He picked his log. He rushed to his house and he said, Father, 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 I'm sure you know this. How do I do this? I have this log of wood. I need to know which end is the upper side and which end is the lower side. Oh, this Lord, I tell you, all ridiculous things. But I also love the way you find the solutions to them. Take this log of wood to the lake outside and drop it there. Of course, it's a log of wood, so it's going to float. But watch it very carefully. It'll have a slight slant to it. One edge will be heading upwards a little above the surface, and the other would be heading downwards just below the surface. The one looking up is the upper part of the tree, and the other one, you know. I'll do that right away. He went to the lake, he dropped the look, he marked them, and he brought them back. The Lord was really, really impressed with this young man. He said, oh, I thought these tasks were impossible. I was just having fun. But you seem to have a solution to every single problem. You are surely a very intelligent man. I would like you to be one of my advisors. I want you to help me out with whatever problems that I may face with the land. The young boy took a deep breath. He gathered courage and he said, My Lord, it is not me who should be in your advisory. It should be my father, my old father. You had asked me to abandon him onto the mountain, but I just could not do it. And I'm glad I did not. The Lord understood the importance of the older people in the society. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Wow, that was a story. <laughs> yes, and and particularly your your storytelling has developed so much. You're you're telling in such a relaxed way, uh, and it seems um, you know so improvisational and so um, spontaneous. It's um, it's really wonderful. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Yeah, Prithika, yeah, your, your narration was very good. And uh, like uh, Eric said, I'm seeing a lot of improvement, you know, a lot of good, very good. And the description of, you know, the log and all that is very nice. Good. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Can you please tell me, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the title of the story again? Uh, it's called, I need to look it up again. It's called uh, The Mountain Where the Older People Were Abandoned. Uh -huh. you, told, you told it beautifully. I'm Judith. You told it absolutely beautifully. And it's interesting. I tell three variants of that story oh. and actually have used it in a workshop. And it's the same basic structure. And it's so wonderful to hear your riddles, which are different from any of the riddles that I have um, read and tell. So just for comparative sake, comparative sake, it might be interesting because I love doing comparative literature that the wooden bowl, which has been sort of attributed as a Jewish story, half a blanket that is an Irish story, and then um, Grandfather's Sled, which is a Russian story. And they're all about um, the elderly being um, outlived their usefulness and the village and the, the leaders wanting to put them on an ice flow or send them away or abandon them. But the children hide them all. And then there's a crisis. Either there's a famine or there's um, some other issue. And they get the wisdom and the solution from the elder person. And then when the mayor or somebody says, well, how did you know this? And say, well, you know, I really didn't send my grandfather out into the woods or on the ice flow or abandon him. And he told me the solution. And they say, ah. 
bring the elders back, we could learn from them. So it was so delightful to hear your version that I had never heard before. But one can check out, if you're interested, those other uh, three titles. So anyway, it was beautiful. Thank you, Judith. Thank you so much. It's interesting to know you have lots of different versions to it. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks. Uh, Regina, then Gustav. Uh, hi, Pratigya. <laughs> um, I loved it. Uh, yeah, one of the things um, to add on to what Judith just said is, is the amazing beauty of the same story being told all around the world. And, and what I just say to people is, we have been walking around the planet for 40,000 years telling each other stories. <laughs> and also, of course, we're all on the planet. We're all living in society. There are these issues, they come up. And so that it's, you know, it's, that they're fundamental and uh, I, people who know me know I jump up and down about don't abandon the old stories they carry truth for right now. And uh, I had a, a very young storyteller say, well, we don't care about those old stories. Oh. Uh, we only want to tell and hear stories that are relevant to our lives. And I just laugh, you know, and it's like, don't you think there are any heartless giants in the world or, you know, um, crocodiles waiting to eat you or where do you think we got the word troll from so don't I I, I, lo I love to hear the old stories and I love it when there are these wonderful overlaps because that is human life in the in the academic field of folklore we we spend a lot of energy trying to decide if a, um, a story has traveled from one place to another or if it has just developed independently in different places. And I think this one, I have a feeling it, 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 it uh, develops independently. So it's what uh, Carl Jung would call an archetypal story, a kind of universal story. Uh, Gustav, what were you gonna say? Well, I um, love that story. I actually tell an Ar Armenian uh, version. <laughs> it is very beautiful about some problems like Regina has said something about um, problems with the climate. I think it's a climate. But the thing is that this story was told. We told. We, I, I work. I, I collaborate in a in a um, institution that works with uh, all the people just like me that we tell stories. And uh, when the pandemic started, uh, there was uh, this bad banishment. No, not the banishment. Prohibition of old people going inside restaurants in Peru. And we were very, very furious because it was so, so unjust because they, they, it's crazy, see? So we, 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 we started telling that story again because it, it, it uh, makes us the necessary, the necess necessary of, of people, of, of age people like we are necessary to tell stories and to, to, to young people. And that's the thing I like very much about this story. And the, the thing is that you, I love the way you tell the story. The, the way you, you said about the conch, the, the light, that was beautiful. I take that, I'll appropriate that because that is a beautiful resource. Thank you. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a flower child from the 1960s, and uh, we used to say, don't trust anybody over 30. But right. now the problem is we're all in our yeah. 60s, 70s, and 80s. So we, uh, we can't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much, Pratigya.